On behalf of our Deputy Commissioner, the Rachel Burgess Burnett, I just wanted to thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, this is a very important webinar. We wanted to talk about some projected demand and classroom data. Um, I do have Christy here with me today, so we're very excited to be able to come in front of you today. Um, I'm Tiffany Junkins, and I am one of the managers here at the Department of Family and Support Services, Children's Services Division. Christy? I am Christy Chadwick, uh, Director of Early Learning Policy in the Mayor's Office. All right. And we're here today um, to bring you this information. This is kind of part two, because this morning um, we had the pleasure of having Sarathel, our Deputy Commissioner, and also um, Mike Wabello um, from the Chicago Public Schools um, talk about our collaboration across the city with Chicago Early Learning and talk about what Chicago Public Schools is doing and in collaboration what the Department of Family and Support Services are doing to support our community-based organizations and the rollout of universal preschools. So we're very excited today. All right, if you need to contact us, our contact information is available to you. Uh, Tiffany.Junkins at thecityofchicago.org and also Christy.Chagwit at cityofchicago.org. So the purpose of this webinar um, is to really walk our community-based organizations through um, the projected demand data. Um, we released information um, in the executive director program directors meeting um, and it gave approximate estimations of classrooms that would be needed. Um, to serve uh, preschoolers, infants and toddlers in our community areas throughout Chicago. So we wanted to really kind of walk through that data to be able to show you how to use the data and also how us as DFSS are using the data for planning purposes. So as a part of us um, developing the community, the community analysis and our demand data, um, the Department of Family and Support Services couldn't do this alone. alone. So this really has been a joint um, partnership with Chicago Public Schools, uh, the Mayor's Office, and also Illinois Action for Children. Um, we want you to know that the rollout of the universal preschool for four-year-olds um, will see an increase in demand for four-year-olds. I know earlier today, um, Michael Bello from Chicago Public Schools, he was talking to Sir Rachel Burgess Burnett just about how you know, the whole purpose of trying to um, open universal preschool and target four-year-olds was making sure that we got more of the four-year-olds who maybe probably would have never been um, in the schools before. Um, so really kind of targeting that population who um, was underserved. And um, so we want to make sure that we kind of highlight some of the areas throughout the community um, where we're trying to increase demand, or at least where we see an increase in demand. Um, we also um, anticipate an increased opportunity to serve more children birth to age three, and we really wanted to highlight that as well throughout our community areas. The analysis also took a look at um, the demand across our 77 community areas. So when we're taking a look at the number of classrooms, um, it would be beneficial for our community-based organizations to look at this data in terms of the percentages that would represent four-year-olds under the universal preschool model. In addition, the percentage of at-risk three-year-olds um, who are preschool related, as well as the percentage of at-risk birth to three uh, in our early intervention prevention initiative programs. So the anticipated demand through the modeling parent choice, uh, we wanted to really kind of highlight the fact that it is a parent's choice, whether they're going to put their child uh, in a public school or if they're going to put their child in a community-based organization. So all of the information that we're going to walk through today, one of the things that the information is giving, it really is giving an estimate um, and a projection as to what we think is going to happen, but it does not substitute for parental choice. We understand that parents do have a choice, and that's one of the things that our data will not be able to predict. So these are only estimates, and we just want to make sure that we have an opportunity to just tell you how we're using this information. So when we're looking at some of the data, we're looking at community characteristics. You know, what are the, the poverty levels or the poverty thresholds that we're looking at across the communities? 
We're looking at enrollment patterns and trends. We're also looking at wait lists where we have under enrollment, where we have over enrollment. Um, some of the predictors we're looking at um, in terms of community with the wait list at CPS, um, we're looking at um, if we can assume like higher percentages of children uh, will go to CBOs to CPS um, as spaces become available. So if there's more seats in CPS, maybe some more of the four-year-olds will matriculate to CPS. However, in communities where um, the opportunities are not available, then our assumption is that we're going to see a shift towards the CBOs. So um, just kind of taking a look at what those trends might look like when it comes to over enrollment or under enrollment, um, as well as um, with higher income families. And I know this is one of the things we talked about with Chicago Public Schools. You know, maybe some of these are the families that were not being served in our programs because they are of the higher income uh, threshold. And so perhaps that we'll get an opportunity to see an increase um, in demand and an increase in enrollment across Chicago Public Schools when it comes to higher uh, threshold families. So our three-year-olds, um, one of the things that we're looking at with our data, we are focusing for 185% of the federal poverty level. And the reason why we're looking at it from that perspective, as you know, with our child care assistance programs, um, the 185% is the threshold that's currently being used. So we wanted to take a look at um, the 185 or below um, for the federal poverty line. And in terms of our demand data, we're really looking at how many classrooms are we looking at in our community-based organizations and community um, if we were able to serve 50% of the children in each of these communities. So, you know, we thought about it. We thought about, hey, should we use 75%? Should we use 25%? Um, and so that was one of the things we kind of went back and forth with. So, the percentage that we settled on was the 50%, and so you'll be able to see that throughout the, the demand data that we're going to show you. Um, in addition to that, um, some of the communities will need to stretch to reach this, and others will already be serving 50% or more. So we realize that this isn't necessarily equally yoked right across our 77 communities. Um, but again, these are predictors, these are indicators um, that we're deciding to use to move forward. When we're looking at our birth to three, um, we're also looking at 185% of the federal poverty level. And um, just note that um, we're looking at those classrooms, but we're looking at them from the 25% perspective. Um, we are, our presence in birth to three, we realize that there's going to be greater opportunities there. And we just need to make sure that, that, that our funding can kind of keep up with that demand. Great, so this is Christy. Um, what I'm gonna do is walk through um, uh, the demand um, projections that we put together. And on the website, there is a file that's labeled CBO projected demand. Um, and that has the spreadsheet that we're gonna go through. Um, and I'm gonna walk through, through bit by bit. Um, but before we get started, um, really wanted to say that the information that's in these spreadsheets is meant for informational and planning purposes only. So it's not guidance or policy from the mayor's office, um, from DFSS or any other entity. Um, this is not relating, related to funding um, at all. These are projections. Funding decisions will be made by the Department of Family Support Services through the RFP process. So this is merely looking at um, estimations and projections. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through each um, column on the spreadsheet. Um, to walk through um, how we, how we um, calculated this. So the first column on the spreadsheet, and you see this is an example of um, Humble Park. Um, the first column on the spreadsheet is the number of anticipated four-year-olds that will be served through universal pre-K. Um, we are anticipating this to be 95% of kindergarten enrollment. Um, you may have received information at the EDPD meeting that Tiffany um, uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, at that point in time, we were estimating 100% of kindergarten enrollment to be the number of fours um, to, for the uptake of universal pre-K. Since then, we've continued to refine our analysis. We think that was a little bit ambitious, especially in the first three years as we roll this out. So we have pulled back on that a little bit, and we're looking at 
95% of kindergarten enrollment as our, as our benchmark. So at the top at the spreadsheet, you'll see a citywide total. So that would be 22,822 or the number of fours that we expect to enroll. Um, and in Humble Park, as an example, that would be 667 four-year-olds. And one of the things I just wanted to point it out um, was about um, the, the column that's going to represent like the Humble Park section, right? That's going to be a list of community areas on your spreadsheet. Now, I don't want people to get confused about the neighborhoods because maybe some of the neighborhoods are going to be within those community areas, but um, the column that Humble Park sits in is specifically calling out the community area, not the neighborhood. Thank you, Christy. Yeah, great. Okay, so continue to walk through this. So moving one column over, um, the number of anticipated four-year-olds to be served in CBOs under universal preschool. So this is the number of kids that will be, we're anticipating will be in DFSS funded preschool. And the way that we got to this 133, where we looked at enrollment trends, McKinney characteristics that um, Tiffany mentioned before. So by looking at all these characteristics, we assumed 133 children, or we projected 133 children, would be in CBOs. So right now, there's a little over 150 children being served um, in CBOs in Humble Park. So what we know, based upon national enrollment trends and city enrollment trends, that we are seeing more four-year-olds going to Chicago public schools based upon parent choice. So this reflects that we know that some of those parents, once Universal is open up, may shift to Chicago Public Schools, um, but a good number will we um, are projecting will stay um, in CBOs. And that's a good point, Christy, um, when we're talking about um, the predictions that we're making. They are predictions, and you know we don't know what the intended outcome will be, but based on the data that we've been able to pull together, that um, when we look at the citywide total, we're looking at um, a little over 2,400 that we anticipating serving um, in our community-based organizations. Again, it is an estimate. It can be higher that we're going to be serving. It could be lower, but it is an estimate. Great, thanks. Okay, the next column, this is the number of anticipated four-year-olds to be served in CPS under universal preschool. So overall, you can see that number is a little over 20,000 in Humble Park, around 534 children. Um, and just to, as a point of reference, right now there are a little over 300 children um, in Humble Park at CPS and over 100 on the wait list. So you can see that's one of the reasons why we are um, anticipating that we'll, you'll have that many more at CPS in Humble Park. So I said about 150 are currently enrolled in CBOs, about 300 in CPS and 100 on the wait list. So that's part of what went into our projections. Thank you, Christy. Okay, so what we wanted to think about in terms of CBOs is how many um, classrooms would it take to serve all the four-year-olds that are staying or attending CBOs for universal preschool um, and half of the three-year-old children under 185% of the federal poverty level. Um, as Tiffany mentioned, we thought about you know, various scenarios, 50%, 25%, um, but we decided to just to put a benchmark in around 50% of FBL. So the first thing we did was calculate um, how many three-year-olds are there under 185% of the federal poverty level. So using census estimates from ICAM, there's around 732 um, in Humble Park. And then um, we wanted to look and see um, So what we wanted to do is look at how many preschoolers overall we would be serving in Humble Park. So that is adding up all the fours that we anticipate staying under universal preschool and half, 50% of the three-year-olds below 185% of the federal poverty level. So you can see that um, you know, the 133 four-year-olds plus half of the 732 is 366 three-year-olds. 499 preschoolers. All right, and then we looked at how many classrooms do we need to serve those 499. So we have 499 preschoolers. We divided that by 17, assuming a class size of 17. And the reason we're assuming a class size 
of 17 is because we know as more um, four-year-olds are served in CPS and more three-year-olds are served in CBOs um, that we need to have a class size of, of 17 um, um, for those children. So 499 divided by 17, 29 classrooms are needed. Um, so then we said, well, how many classrooms do we have right now? So how many classrooms do we already have in CBOs in, the, in these communities um, that are already funded by DFSS? So all the programs that um, you have and up, up and running and are operating, how many is that in Humble Park? And so right now, um, 18. 18 classrooms. Um, so what we did was we said we need 29. We already have 18. That means we're going to need an additional 11 classrooms if, if we wanted to serve those fours and 50% um, of threes under 185. Uh, that's, we're not saying that we're going to serve 50%. Um, we're not saying we have to serve 50%. It's just for planning purposes for us to say, you know, what would it look like um, if we wanted to serve 50% in this area? Do we have enough classrooms? Do we need more classrooms? Um, really just a guide for, for our thinking and planning. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Christy. Um, you know, again, I know we've stressed that these are estimates and um, I just want to make sure that we're still reiterating the fact that we can't predict parental choice and parent behavior. So we don't know, you know, necessarily where the children are going to go in the fall, but using the data that we have, we're making our best guesstimate in terms of where children may go. So we're using this for planning purposes, but it truly is our best guess data. So just a note, in some communities, when you look at this data, you'll see a negative number. So for this example community, there's a negative four. And what the negative number indicates is where there are more classrooms in that community than would be needed to serve the four-year-olds that we anticipate going to CBOs and 50% of the three-year-olds. Um, so what this means is that there's an opportunity to serve even more three-year-olds um, with the current classrooms. And so that's a good point, Christy. One of the things that we've been using this information for is to take a look at um, expansion. When we're looking across our 77 communities, we're trying to see, according to our demand data, where is growth opportunities? Where is the data telling us that we can grow? Where is the data telling us where we should not add additional classrooms? Um, so that's how we're using them, the information. We do want our community-based organizations to be able to take a look at the information to determine their presence in communities as well. Great. Um, so then we did the same thing looking at um, birth to three-year-olds. Um, so for birth to three, we said, you know, let's um, have a little bit lower benchmark. We know that reaching birth to three-year-olds is more challenging and we have a long way to go. Um, so we said, what if we wanted to serve 25%, a quarter of um, the birth of three-year-olds under 185% of the federal poverty level? How many classes would it take to serve 25% in each community? And you can see that for the citywide data, um, we would need you know, an additional 1,323 classrooms in order to um, serve those kids. That's a lot of classrooms. Um, we are not saying that this is our goal, um, even today or tomorrow. Um, it's just for planning, but you can see if we did want to serve those kids, it'd be about 1,323 classrooms. So let's walk through how we got to these numbers. Okay, so really similarly to um, how we calculated the uh, threes and fours, um, we looked at the number of children birth to three under 185% federal poverty level. So in Humble Park, there's 2,215 um, children under uh, birth to three under 185%. And then we looked at how many DFSS funded classrooms are out there. So um, in, in the current community organizations, there are 36 birth to three classrooms based upon um, the data that we have. So one of the things that, um, before we go into the timeline, I just wanted to to mention that when we're looking at the preschool data and how we walked at walk through 
um, each of the columns and how we arrived at the estimate number of classrooms that will be needed in the various communities. As you're looking at uh, the document that's published, we want you to kind of think about that um, in terms of um, where do I see myself in terms of, you know, how do I market my program, thinking about different strategies, um, how do I recruit um, additional children for the fall. We're really wanting um, it to be used for planning purposes to say, you know, how are we going to move forward? Christy mentioned that, you know, this information is going to come out via the RFP. And so we're really excited about, you know, the opportunity, but we really want you to kind of look at the information. Um, and, you know, obviously where there's going to be communities where the data is telling us that there's going to be room for growth, we really want um, our programs to take a look at, you know, those as expansion opportunities. And where there's an oversaturation in certain communities, um, then obviously we want you to think about how you plan. Um, to also stay viable in the communities where you're already at um, while, you know, making your presence known. In all of the data that we've presented, uh, one of the things I want you to be able to see is that every community organization who's funded by the Department of Family and Support Services for Early Childhood Services, they're represented in this data. We didn't leave you off. You're a part of this data. So your programs are already being implied when we're talking about demand data. Um, I think that's important for you to know that this is taking into consideration all of you. And um, so how we're going to move forward with this is what I want to talk about. And um, some of the timeline we've already kind of went through already. Um, October, November has already occurred, but we did an in-depth analysis of the data by cross-agency team, and we've already talked about who participated, right, who was at the table. So in addition to the Department of Family and Support Services, Chicago Public Schools, the Mayor's Office, and Illinois Action for Children. Another part of this was prioritizing communities. Uh, and um, now that we're, you know, in the next phase of the timeline, January, February, and March, um, we're going through the selection of community process. Um, the release of community uh, rollout plan, and really trying to engage our community when it comes to planning. Um, we also are in the development um, or moving towards the development of our outreach plan. And we want you to be an integral part of our plans to make sure that you're recruiting um, as we head into fall 2019. We want to make sure that all of our programs are going to be prepared. And this is one of the ways um, that we are approaching this information. I know I was talking to Christy yesterday, and we were talking about, you know, when we're talking about demand data, maybe sometimes um, we want to be able to make it relevant, and how do we make this information really relate to our, our programs? And we got to talking about the census data. And as you know, every 10 years, um, we nationally undergo census counts. And as much as possible on a national level, we try to make sure that we're giving accurate counts of our population. And so if we can kind of think about the demand data that we had to do, um, I want you to kind of look at it in the context of the census data. So census 2020, right? Census 2020 doesn't begin in 2020. Census 2020 actually began 10 years ago. <laughs> so right after um, the census information was published for 2010, then immediately we started to plan then for the next 10 year, okay? Unfortunately, we didn't have that long to prepare, and ours definitely isn't up to the scale that we're talking about with census, but if you can think about that being kind of uh, the macro data, then ours was definitely um, on the micro scale, but definitely large enough that we're talking about the entire city of Chicago. So um, the data sources that we're able to provide. Um, we just want to make sure that there is an understanding about how this data came to be, and we want to make sure that you can see yourself viable in this data, because all of our organizations are accounted for in this data. And again, this is a prediction. We may serve more, we may serve less, but it is our best prediction based on the data that we have. So we have some additional information to help you um, as it relates to the communities that you're in. So if you would like, um, there's some additional resources. Please feel free to use this information. Um, and 
you know, some of you may be present in one community, some may be present in multiple communities. Um, but please use this information as a resource in addition to the information and demand data that we've provided today. I just want to thank you for your time and attention. Um, it was pretty amazing. Christy, um, did you have anything additional that you wanted to add? No, just that we um, have also put together some current enrollment data for you around four-year-olds, three-year-olds, and zero to three-year-olds. Um, and that'll be posted on the website as well um, with this webinar. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, guys.